What's going on, Nation? I'm sitting here with my buddy Dan Reardon, the CEO of Muscle Jeans, to talk to you guys about what's coming up. And for those of you who already have jean kits, some things that you can expect in the near future as well. What's up, Dan? How you doing, Scott? Thanks for having me all the way down in Beverly Hills. Good to see you, buddy. It's great to have you here. Great to have you and Erica here, actually. Erica's here too. She's holding the camera. I'm the camera girl. <laughs> <laughs> So what's going on, Dan? Obviously, you know, I've been a part of Muscle Jeans now for a while. Mm. You know, it's been over, over a year already Pretty since much we since started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Muscle Jeans has been growing a lot. That's why Dan's here in Beverly Hills. The business has been expanding. I know a lot of you guys already bought kits, and it's just been amazing to see. You know, this is a new field for most people. And, there, you know, obviously some people still think, oh, what can a jean kit really tell me? Mm -hmm. But for those of you who have watched my video with Erica, we talk about our, our jeans and what our, our our report said and how it helped us with our training and you know it's been a huge help yeah but i understand there's some new stuff coming out some new genes that you guys have been doing research on yeah, yeah. that would, i'm very interested in and i'm sure they would be interested in as well yeah sure i mean i guess the the, the big things that have happened in muscle genes has been the size of the team and how, how the team's grown uh, we've put a lot of emphasis into the technology team and into the science team. So Which is great. I mean, yeah. this, they basically went from a team of like seven people to like over 30, which mm. just goes to show you how successful this stuff is going because it's it's real. Like knowing what genes you have and how to, how to focus on the needs, like your body's actual needs will help you bring your training to the next level. Absolutely, totally so, agree. Let's talk about um, what's going on with testosterone okay. and the other gene type that we talked about before we started the video. Okay, with testosterone, one of the things that, well, one of the things that Muscle Genes is really interested in is obviously building muscle. And we all know that one of the things that's essential for building muscle is testosterone. And we had this theory about how we could investigate the genes that we know have something to do with testosterone production. Mm -hmm. So whether it's uh, testosterone itself, whether it's the steroid hormone binding globulins, we knew that there was enough information that existed and with some of our own theories stemming from Stuart and Sam and the science team, as well as my input, that we'd be able to uh, start to look at some models that would allow us to predict genetic predispositions to high or low testosterone. Oh wow, and that's, that's, gone. that's yeah, pretty awesome. It is, and then from that, what we then did was we built a system called the Testosterone Evaluation Template, or the TET score, which is overlaying the genetic information with environmental information, so things like age, body composition, and things like that, where we can then actually accurately give a score which is going to truly predict um, the your, not only your genetic score, but also when you take into account the environmental factors and give a template upon which it becomes actionable. So. It might be that your score comes back high or very high, in which case you know that probably your testosterone is not going to be a limiting factor in building muscle and losing body fat and maintaining a good body composition. Whereas if your score is coming back low or medium, you know that your testosterone might potentially be a factor and it might be a good idea for you to go to your doctor and get your free testosterone and total testosterone levels checked. As well as us being able to give some information about well, the actionable points of how you can potentially try and raise your testosterone levels naturally. So things like um, it might be vitamin D, it might be zinc and magnesium, it might be making sure you're consuming enough saturated fats in your diet. And I feel like that's a good point because I know a lot of people have a problem with their diet and as soon as they hear that their testosterone levels are low, mm. and we did a video about testosterone and how to increase it naturally, mm. As soon as they hit the testosterone low, they immediately just go to like a supplement or an external yeah. source, and yeah. they don't realize that they can do some of the things that are suggested yeah. in the report yeah. in order to raise it back up to a normal level. Absolutely, or at least, or at least raise it to something that's better than what it is. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, if you have very low testosterone, you can lose body fat. You can, you know, do high intense, high intensity training and lift weights. You can do all these things, but you only sometimes you might only get a marginal increase in testosterone levels. Now, in the absence of symptoms, everything might be fine, but it's people that are getting symptoms of low testosterone where it becomes important and therefore going and seeing a doctor uh, and perhaps getting it investigated. For us, it's, uh, it's been a very interesting concept and an interesting product to add to the muscle genes portfolio of, uh, of genes. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people, you know, they might see this as an easy solution to figure out how to change things in their diet in order to hit their goals. And because it's so easy, because it's just a matter of figuring out what your genes are, people might think it's too good to be true. Yeah. So like you're saying, oh, you know, if you 
do the gene kit, we can tell you what your testosterone levels are, we can do this test, yeah. and then, you know, based on what your results are, is a good indication as to whether or not you should go see your doctor. Precisely. And people might just think, ah, oh, whatever, yeah. you know, but yeah. we're here to tell you that it's mm -hmm. it's real and it's a really easy way because mm -hmm. this is just one yeah. of yeah. the gene types. This is, this is just like, I know Dan is like super smart, he's like five scientists in one brain, <laughs> you know what I mean? So you guys might not have understood a lot of things he said, but all the stuff that Dan's talking about, you know, when you get your report back, it's all explained in the report and then it's also giving you guidance on how to adjust your diet and lifestyle in order to, you know, get the results that you want. Yeah. I think as well with the testosterone, one of the things that we're really working hard to do is to stop people feeling scared to talk about testosterone. The problem is, if you have anything to do with the fitness industry or the sports world, People are scared to talk about it because of the fear of if you mention testosterone, all of a sudden you must be using steroids. Yeah, right. Yeah. And and that's simply not true. And it's very it's then easy for people to fail to understand that maintaining healthy testosterone levels is critical to body composition and long-term health. Mm -hmm. So what we're trying to do with from our scientific backgrounds, to the fact that we're talking about this from the scientific angles to it, and I'm talking about it from a from the medical angle to it, and then mm -hmm. everyone else is talking about the body comp angle. We want to just make it easy and free for people to be able to learn about testosterone, but learn about it in the right way and not the wrong way. Mm -hmm. So we've really enjoyed the opportunity to do that. And we've actually conducted some research on it. We did we did a uh, study, uh, over 500 people um, responded to the study. Oh yeah. So <laughs> later, later this year, we're gonna be writing up and publishing some very interesting information around the, the, the genetic testosterone model and the testosterone evaluation template or the tech school. Well, if you guys are interested in checking this out, I'm going to put a link down in the info section below and I'll put a link, you know, right here as well. And you can even sign up for the email too because you guys, Muscle Gene is always putting out newsletters letting you know what's going on, what's new, what you can expect and, you know, if you already had your gene kit done, there's also you know, places you can go to on the website where you can get more answers to your questions. The FTO gene is a very popular gene at the moment in the world because one of the things with the FTO gene is that there's a relationship to obesity. So for example, one of the statistics that we know is that 70% of people who are morbidly obese have two variations of the FTO gene. So, oh, wow. so it's quite significant, so the implication is quite significant. So Stuart, Sam, our new scientist Nathan, and some of the other members of the science team, the interns, one of the things that they've spent a lot of time on over the last uh, sort of four, five, six weeks is the research around the FTO gene. We're not so much focused on the things that other people have said about it, because as you know, for muscle genes, we're all about being original and actually going back to the basics of science and the basics of biology to get a much better understanding yeah. that far supersedes anybody else's understanding. Yeah, there's, a, there's a lot of groundbreaking research that you guys do absolutely. to make sure whatever is getting put out is Absol true and absolutely. tested by the team. Absolutely, and, and testament to that is two of the leading universities in the UK actually came to Muscle Genes and came to the scientists at Muscle Genes and actually said, listen guys, one of the things that we'd really like to try and understand is we, we recognize that not everybody that has these variations in the FTO gene is obese, mm -hmm. and we'd really like to try and understand why. And So can we explain real quick to the community what exactly the FTO gene is? It's a gene that we believe has something to do with appetite regulation. Mm -hmm. There's, it has something to do with ghrelin, uh, the hormone ghrelin. Um, and it has something to do with um, metabolism as well, speed of metabolism or efficiency of metabolism. A lot of the information is kind of, it's information through correlation uh, and it's ob uh, information through observational work. Um, so I don't think anyone really truly understands what the relationship of the FTO variations is to as to why people are becoming obese but we know that it's probably got something to do with appetite as a result of having something to do with ghrelin. Yeah, increased appetite, increased metabolism. Potentially, you know? potentially. I mean, you know, we know that ghrelin, for example, is the target of a lot of, you know, I mean, there's performance enhancing, performance enhancing drugs that, that target ghrelin. Um, and uh, the reason for that is that ghrelin um, not only has, has things to do with uh, appetite, but it also has, there's, it has stuff to do with growth hormone and growth hormone release as well. So it's 
understanding all of this stuff is not straightforward, you know, and that's why it requires real scientists like Stuart and Sam to really get to the, the nitty gritty of it. It's actually not, it's actually inaccurate to be talking about the FTOG because what, what we also know, there was a, a, pub, a paper published in Nature, uh, I think it was March of last year, which actually showed that it wasn't the variations of the FTO gene, it was actually variations in um, signaling pathways um, before the FTO gene, which is where the variations were coming from that led to the change in that. But so, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a complicated, it, it's the, the, the science is complicated and it's the interpretation that we're working hard on to make sure yeah. that you guys understand. Uh, and, and at this stage, as I say, we, we're, we're we're about to release uh, the research actually, we're about to release uh, the results to the MG Nation, uh, which I think we're aiming for next week, the end of next week or the beginning of the following week. Um, with regards to the studies that we're doing with Loughborough University and also another very well known university, the data will be going to them, I think probably in a couple of weeks time. I think we've had about something like 500 participants with the obesity study. And yeah, you can bet your bottom dollar that there's going to be some amazing, amazing data that's going to come out of that. Nice. Well, thanks, Dan. Thank Lots of information to digest. <laughs> it's great to see you. And for those of you who, like I said, if you want to check out more about muscle genes, I'll put a link in the info section below. Jump on the newsletter. There's always new studies coming out. And obviously, if you have any questions about your report, you can either go to the Muscle Genes website or you can ask me questions in the comment section or in the forum section of musculostrength.com. All right, guys, until next time. Thank you very much. See you later. See you later.